is the Glass Cannon Network. Hey! You! Yeah! I'm talking to you! Get in the truck! Get in the truck! <laughs> it's time for an episode of Get in the Truck. What's going on, everybody? My name's Joe O'Brien. I'm playing this with my friend Skid Mara, Troy LaValle, Sidney Emanuel, and Francis Brema. I almost forgot uh, two of your names during that, so I'm very <laughs> which, impressed with myself. Which two? I can't and, say. That would be rude. That would, and we're not friends. That would be rude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the two, I will say this, the two that I like just basically couldn't remember right until the last second, uh, I don't consider my friends. <laughs> yeah. cool. Now we have to fight for Joe's friendship. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Good evening. Welcome back. We're so excited to jump back into Get in the Trunk, a little Delta Green action here on a Tuesday night. Is it a Tuesday night? I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure that this airs on Tuesday, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Are you? You don't seem sure. No, I don't make those decisions. I'm just, I'm just here to terrify uh, you as players and put you in horrible situations. And that is what's happening tonight. Oh yes, there is going to be terrible. Terrible things are going to happen tonight, and I'm very, very excited. I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Uh, Sid, how are you? How you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. I like. I really like the. Um, it's like in Spanish how you can say something with a certain like accent and it means a command. And I like that the new thing is like, get in the trunk. Yeah. <laughs> get in the trunk. Right. Exactly. It's no like, longer a question. It's no longer an option. And I like that energy. I'm going to bring that tonight. <laughs> yeah. A couple episodes ago, it was, it, 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 I don't know. It just, it just makes me so happy that I don't, I don't want to force it and I don't feel like we did, but I think once a season, we should really try to jam someone in a trunk. And uh, <laughs> you definitely did it two episodes ago. I didn't even think about it, but man, the titular episode. We did it, guys. Did we it. did it. We got him in the trunk. It's not a season until you stuff somebody in a trunk. <laughs> <laughs> you should get extra points in Delta Green if you're able to right. stuff someone in a trunk. It just seems like an inspiration. Absolutely. Use it for your home games. Little, little yeah. homebrew yes. action. Uh, make sure that you house rule. Uh, any Anytime you shove somebody in a trunk, you get some extra... <laughs> plus 20% on your rolls for a day. I don't know. It, it's it's a wonderful thing. When Troy came up with the title, obviously it sounded very strange uh, at the start, but then the more you think about it, it's very Delta Green because there are many different situations in which you could want to get in the trunk or you could have to force someone in the trunk <laughs> for various reasons, uh, from hiding someone to moving a corpse. <laughs> There's all kinds, of, all kinds of ways to get in the trunk. Francis, you're looking purpley today. I like the look. Yes, it's, uh, it's the vibe I'm giving off today. It's actually not a light. It's actually my vibe. Whoa, purple is the aura. color of your energy. Um, yeah, I'm really just vibing purple right now. Um, yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling ready to get in this trunk. I was actually just in a trunk before the show. <laughs> and I, just uh, I was so I was, method. You know, yeah, I had to get in the trunk to really get in the trunk to really feel <laughs> yes. that energy. Yes, Troy, is this your what? favorite? Be honest. Is this your favorite show to do because you get to wear sunglasses the whole time <laughs> and no one can see your eyes? <laughs> no see uh, I'm not gonna lie. It's a it's a bonus. It's a, <laughs> it's a real perk. Wouldn't it be nice to do that for more shows? Yeah, I, uh, I, I, or in life, I'd like to maybe just start doing this in life. Like yeah, just wear them inside all the time. Because I could just be like in a conversation with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, no, I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad listening. to hear about how all those people are doing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I, uh, I I feel that way when I uh, when I'm in a passenger seat of a car and I am super super tired. You ever like you're in the passenger seat and like you're falling asleep and you know like it's not cool. Like you're supposed to be hanging with the driver and you know you're kind of like leaving them behind. And I'll do like the shades thing, eyes closed, and just <laughs> act like I'm listening. And you're just like, uh huh, 
Yep. Totally. <laughs> totally. And, and then you just say something completely ridiculous, you know, like, dude, you John, know John times, picked up the mail. I'm like, what? <laughs> what did you just say? You know how many times we've been like on tour and had to like take rides from one city to the other and like, all of y'all are in the car and you all fell asleep. And I'm just like, oh, come on. Yeah. Don't leave me here with my thoughts. <laughs> it's a terrible place. Troy is also horrible uh, at, at making turns at the time you're supposed to make them. Like he usually <laughs> blows past any exit on a highway that he's supposed to take. I'm real uh, bad at, the, at exits. Yeah. It always happens on the Boston trip. There's this one. It's a tricky exit. <laughs> but one time we left the brewery and I missed the exit it three times three times and it the adds same like exit. an extra 12 minutes every time you do it and uh i mean it was no joke every single time it came up and i'm like why because you know the google maps is telling you to do one thing and it's counterintuitive to what you actually see so i can't turn off my targeting computer because i'm always afraid i'm gonna like fuck it up and it's just this weird little split one takes you to boston and one takes you back to new york and i always go back to new york I'm like no 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 <laughs> Three times. No I mean, in his defense, Matthew and I were both in the car and we missed it both of the other two times too. You know, because we're just BS and blah, 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 blah. And we're like, did you miss it again? <laughs> That's awesome. This way back to New York. Uh, Skid, how you feeling, pal? Great. Good. Good. Ready, ready to get out of the trunk. <laughs> oh. Whoa. All right. He's well, been let's, in the trunk too long. Yeah. Let's Somebody's burst been in the trunk from the trunk and uh, do a brief recap to get everybody back up to speed. Last week on Get in the Trunk, you guys, man, that was a wild episode because it begins, if I'm not mistaken, with Vicky finding out that, um, that the scribe. The machine that is in Dr. Barbus's house apparently knows the name and address of her son, Sam, <laughs> sent him an invitation to a private secret fraternity gathering. What does this mean? Is Sam a target of whatever is happening here? Vicky freaks out, finally gets a hold of Sam late in the episode and uh, tells him under no circumstances are you to go to that party. He's like, come on. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to go to the secret fraternity party. Um, but you guys, after deciding your interrogation with Dr. Barbas is over, have an extended conversation about what you, are, you should do with him. Should you even keep him alive? Should you just kill him? Put him out of his misery? You know this to be a really good Delta Green agent. And a really good detective, but something has happened and he has now come under the sway of this unnatural force and it has corrupted him entirely, in your opinion. And so you make the decision to put him down. You call in another Delta Green team to come in and a couple of cleaners that come in and get the body out of there. And then you decide you want to return to his house with a recording of his voice on you on Vicky's cell phone that uses the strange command seems like a different language that he uses to stop the lion, the defense sentry robot that he built in his house from attacking you so that you can explore the house in peace and comfort. You return to Dr. Barbus's house through and go through the backyard in through the kitchen door, which you know to be broken. Roger had broken it earlier. And you decide to bust in the door. Or I'm sorry, you open that busted door. Roger walks in, lures the machine toward him. It attacks. Things get really tense within the first action of that round. And then Vicky just sticks this phone out and plays the message. Leon, it's all Allah. I forget exactly how it sounded, but it was something like that. Uh, the second you play that, Vicky, the robot seems to immediately shut down. It drops to the floor. And its arms come up. And it's this boxy sort of thing that positions itself near the kitchen door and seems to just stop. Apparently... This ridiculous plan worked. Yes! <laughs> and all of a sudden you're all... <sighs> <sighs> and there you are in the kitchen. Garbage can, garbage can lid tossed to the side of the floor. 
It's completely dark in here, but there is some moonlight that is coming through the kitchen window. Neil and Bobby are still just outside the door. Roger is just inside the door. Vicky is in the doorway. Holding up a phone. What do you do? To get into the house and turn on the lights. And close the door. And close well, the, the door. door's like broken, but kind of close the door. Okay, everybody shuffles into the house and whoosh, closes the door. Neil flicks on the lights. Click, 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 click. Nothing. No oh, power. Fuck, God. And it's just darkness inside. See, this is what I was thinking. It's like, we're doing this at night. If It would be great if we could work have some light to work with but it's way more suspicious to see a bunch of flashlights Flashlights, if you're a neighbor than if you're seeing like just lights on in the middle of the night yeah so well he had that mining helmet which they're used to seeing that's true so maybe um after realizing that doesn't work vicky like you know flicks her flashlight on for a second and then she's like that's a stupid idea and she puts it down and she's gonna go back outside and get that mining helmet that I think Roger like hit it off of him when they were fighting. Yeah, I think he broke it. Oh, but, he broke it. But well, maybe fuck. he maybe he didn't. I mean, I thought, he goes he, out- I thought he smashed it. When I tackled him, did it just fall off? Or he had I it on when you drug just- him outside, and I remember it shined in your face, and then you just like clocked him. <laughs> and I think that let's just say that it's not broken, and it's it's sitting outside. All right, so Vicky goes out, picks it up, brings it back in. Roll a stealth check. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Plus twenty oh, percent. No for the night time. Oh, thank God. Every That's one of the right these time. is important because you, you don't want to attract the attention of neighbors as you're breaking into this house. I, guess. Ooh, I rolled a 22. I have an 11 stealth, but with the 20%, that gets me there. Oh my God, 11 stealth. What does that mean? You just open the door. You're like, where's that hell? <laughs> like... <laughs> Has anyone in this neighborhood seen a mining helmet? I slam the door open and I call for it like a dog. <laughs> oh, helmet! You let your team know you found the helmet by firing two shots in the air? <laughs> Bye-bye! Got the helmet. Vicky's so trigger-happy. Her, health is, her stealth is so low because she fires her gun every time. <laughs> Yeah, at some point during that invasion, I can't remember when it was, uh, that home invasion, Troy, uh, or uh, Roger, fired six shots into the air flavor-wise at one point, <laughs> just because. Just like, bye, 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 bye. Ah! Uh, Okay, you get the miner's helmet back in. Who's putting it on? God. I mean, we could just hold it, but she does bring okay. it back in. And yeah. She says, it, it works. Is it magic? Oh. All right, you can just hold it. <laughs> Is All it magic? four of us hold don't, it. Like don't tell a me you're Ouija. doing anything with both hands. Let's the, all put our time. hands on it like a Ouija board. <laughs> Where does the helmet lead you? I can't hold the helmet with one hand, sure. Joseph. Sure. It said no. Can we just put it? All right, Vicky's it holding the helmet with one hand. Turns on the light, and you begin what? Washing it around this kitchen. I'm going to go over some of this again, but some of you didn't really ever get a good look at this uh, character-wise, so. Uh, I will go into that now. You see there are two paint pans sitting on the counter and they are uh, covered, they're they're filled, not to the brim, but up a little bit with some sort of uh, liquid that you suspect is gasoline because of the strong smell that you're getting there's this smell of oil and gasoline all through this house inside this gasoline is uh, a bunch of nuts and bolts just soaking next to that you see a a, uh, sink it's empty next to the sink you see a pile of dishes that are all clean and broken all broken into pieces you see a drawer partially open with some silverware in it Otherwise, you have refrigerator, small two two uh, two seater table, eat in kitchen table, and the machine, the lion sitting inert for the moment. That's what you see in the kitchen. Gasoline's weird. This has to be yeah. pretty fresh. It has to be pretty recent because gasoline evaporates really fast. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. I have a tank of gasoline in my shed that's been in there for three years and there's 
It's still there. There's just less of it. <laughs> and that's science. <laughs> and that's science. Um, um, yeah. Science. I'm not we... interested in your anecdotal crap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested in science and evidence. He's a doctor. Would we assume? Shit. <laughs> would we assume that the gasoline is similar to the oil stains? Like he was using it for machinery. Yeah. Okay. Using it to clean parts and stuff like that. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. I was gonna say maybe the machines were running gasoline, but maybe not. Maybe, maybe the machines were making themselves drinks in the kitchen. This <laughs> <laughs> is it's after hours. That's their cocktail night. <laughs> cocktail <laughs> night. The dishes is weird. All the smashed, like they're clean, but they're smashed. Mm-hmm. All these people are Why weird you guys about their all, dishes. Uh, I'm, you know what? I'm just going to assume that you're searching the place. Yeah. Right? Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So everybody give me a search roll uh, for the kitchen. <sighs> you're... We're assuming you're opening the fridge. You're looking under the table. You're opening drawers. You're... Oh, I just failed up. I did too. Me too. 62. 60. I can't... I can't see my dice in these gloves. I got. A, I actually got a ninety-nine. <laughs> oh wow! Oh, yeah, the robot uh, awakens. <laughs> oh God! Sir, I, I, I failed. We all fail. God damn we it, fail, guys! Wow. This is going to be pretty bad for you. It's you're you, you're long, just yeah. not the skill of your team. It's not <laughs> not searching. Yeah, no. uh, you look it's through the kitchen. You find nothing uh, of interest. Nothing you don't already know, including you know the refrigerator is warm. Uh, and it's just has some condiments in it and like nothing else. Let's go to the living room and let's do another search. Okay. Go to, you go through the dining room, ignore it completely into Whoa. the living room. Okay. Critical just success. 11 under 18. Oh, wow. Let's wow. fucking go. Dude, that's <laughs> huge. Everybody else roll. Um, now Four. you have back in the kitchen behind Roger you. Roger rips the a shot of gasoline and <laughs> goes <laughs> out. Heightens his senses. Let's go. <laughs> I see everything. You pick up this paint pan and just drink gasoline. <laughs> you just like, spit out a couple like bolts. the Matrix. It's just like green numbers. Like yeah. running. This is how we did it in the army. <laughs> I was part of an experimental crew where they would feed us gasoline just to see how it would affect us. We all got really sick. <laughs> A lot of people died. <laughs> A lot of people died during that experiment. Okay. Everybody else failed their search roll in the living room, I presume. No. Oh, because no, sorry. I, I, well, that was real quick. I didn't get the roll. Okay. 20, 27 under 54. I yeah, know. I did feel I got 94. <laughs> okay. Francis. These, these dice are broken. Okay. You guys are looking around the living room and remember this place had piles of books. It had p pieces of machinery kind of all over oil stains on the wood floor. Um, and it smelled like a mechanic shop. However, I also mentioned this last week. There is a little bit of a smell of like hookah smoke in the air as well. Remember, there's hmm. like this little bit of a tobacco, like a sweet tobacco-y kind of odor that's barely noticeable. It's just there in the background. But yeah, it's kind of overpowered by gasoline and oil. And Incense from some unseen sensor. Yes, exactly. Vicky, hookah smoke. you go back to the window, the window where you first alerted Jesus, the next door neighbor, that you were in the house because you tripped and fell in the darkness on some um, plates, uh, uh, ceramics, yeah, some ceramic, broken ceramics, and you grabbed at the with a curtain and it ripped it open and made a bunch of noise. You go back into that corner and you start shining your light and onto these uh, broken ceramics. Neil, this catches your attention. Uh, with your background in art, this seems like sculpture material. Mm -hmm. um, and you go over there. Give me an art roll. Okay. Neil's okay. time to shine, baby. Yeah, Neil. <laughs> uh, 44 under, under 70. Another critical success nice. in the room. Amazing. <clears throat> Neil, you go over, and this appears to be what you would call a lost wax casting, which is 
a method that's used to duplicate a metal sculpture and transform it, you know, into a, a mold. For thousands of years, this is this method has been used. Yeah, and cle- clearly, what you're looking at is a uh, is a mold that was poured with copper and then smashed with a hammer, but you can't find the crucible. Um, well, you know what? You got the critical success. So I'm going to say you start piecing this thing together, finding the pieces all around there, spread in a wide area. And Neil starts like putting this together. We'll go over to Roger, who also got a critical success. <clears throat> Roger, let's just say you're taking your cell phone light, keeping it low to the ground, and you're looking over the books. Books are a lot of them are stained uh, with oil and stuff like that. Um, some of them are open and they are clearly like have mechanical drawings in them. They're like how to books and stuff like that. But then there's something that, that grabs your attention. It is the most beat up book quote unquote of all of them and it's not a book it appears to be printed pages uh printed out of a printer that are just stacked like a whole bunch of them stacked together and they are worn and uh you can tell that they've been read hundreds and hundreds of times they have stains on them that are like fingerprint stains fingerprint stains uh that are made of the oil and there are notes all over it in ha- in pen some in blue ink, some in red ink, all over this. This looks like crazy town, and it immediately draws your attention. You start flipping through it, and you see a title on the top of it. It has a title page printed, and it's called The Ars Goetia. A-R-S-G-O-E-T-I-A. This is like King Solomon, right? This has come up. Yeah, we've we've Ars talked Galatia. about this book before. It's in yeah. my notes somewhere. Yeah, this came up recently. I can't remember who was. Oh no, we we found it in his house. The Ars Goetia book he has in his house. Why did we bring that up? It's in my notes. He said this it. Is... He told you. Oh. I believe during the interrogation he mentioned right. it. Right. Okay. This is a real like occult book. Yeah. Uh, that's like supposedly uh, a, a a a kind of. A textbook for about like King Solomon's methods for trapping demons. <laughs> oh, oh, right, well, that- Skid, let's translate that into real world, into game world stuff in a second. Um, all right, <laughs> this is so Neil focused. So, like, let's first have <laughs> Neil. Well, Roger, as you look through it, okay, you know that this is important, and you see. In your earliest, like, lookings through, you see symbols, demonic symbols, like, on every page. And it appears to be printed, like, from the internet, basically, to you. Like a, like a public domain version of this book printed on pages, as opposed to it being an actual bound, purchased book. Mm-hmm. You see these demonic seals, the same, you see the same seal that you saw under the bed upstairs you saw a seal if you remember on the ground three foot in diameter that had letters around it that said marbus you also saw this uh, a similar looking stylistic seal back in abigail wright's apartment that said person p-u-r-s-o-n and the, the with the letters around the outside you notice as you flip to every page of this book every demonic symbol is a circle with some kind of symbol inside of it and the name around it and you see that these are the names of demons person is the name of a demon marbus is the name of a demon as you're flipping through this thing and you see notes on all these pages summoning circles exactly you see a note that jumps out to you and just says b the letter b period b is solomon huh you see another note as you're flipping this catches your attention because of your name and because of what you saw with uh, Westover. The play is still going on somewhere. Just see this note about a play. We'll go back to Neil. Neil is piecing together this ceramic. It's taking minutes of time as he's 
finding pieces and slowly slotting them together. And within a reasonable amount of time, Neil, you see that this cast, this pour, uh, appears to be a mold of a two-foot statue of a what looks like a clockwork child (laughs) with a harlequin mask on its face. And (laughs) as you're putting the final pieces on, you know that you saw this exact thing in the night floors. Yeah. And it brought you the invitation. invitation. Yes. Right. Exactly. And it, so how does this affect Neil? Do you think? Uh, I think there's this burst of kind of giddy excitement. And then it's like quickly intermingled with this terror of, you know, that on the uh, something that can has has brought him and could again bring him to the edge of madness. Go ahead and roll a sanity check. Okay. Oh man. Uh oh shoot. Uh twenty five under my sanity. Oh nice. Low. Okay, so I love that mix. So you're both yeah, twenty five under twenty eight. <laughs> 28. Oh, for some reason I thought it was 38. Oh boy, this is scary. Yeah. So yeah, it's no, bringing sorry, 33, you 33. I'm sorry. Okay. Never mind. It's bringing you to the edge of madness, but you are delighting in it in a way. So it does no damage to you and you love that you found this thing. It's answering questions that you've been asking probably for 20 years, right? It's it's yeah. starting to bring some answers to these questions. And then let's have you turn your attention to the Ars Goetia. Um, Neil, we'll just say because of your art history and everything that you've dug in. And actually, you know what, Roger? I, I forgot that you uh, are an occult fella. So a uh, I dabble. Go <laughs> ahead and... Um, a little beach reading from time to time for old Rog. <laughs> give, me a, give me a roll on the occult. Okay. Um, I can do that. What is my... Akai? My occult's a 22. Uh, there's a small Ooh. chance here. Uh, okay, that's <laughs> funny. I have a die where one of the numbers is completely rubbed out. Uh, <laughs> and it's the tens die. And I think the one that's rubbed out is a one. Really? No, fuck. 10, 50, 30, 90, 70. Now, uh, or is it the double zero? <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is the double zero. I rolled a five under 22. Wow. Holy, shit. Holy crap. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. I'm like looking. <laughs> yep. No double zero. Five under 22. Okay. All right. That's well, awesome. uh, yeah, I apologize. I didn't have you do this before. Then let's say Roger actually, uh, while Neil's finishing putting together this, this uh, <laughs> little clockwork <laughs> child, you also, you are like, You've heard of this, not and not just from <clears throat> the. <laughs> did you just fall over? I did. <laughs> He's probably looking for a new dice. Where, where He's looking for a new <laughs> die. Probably. I've, uh, I've fallen. Oh, he fallen. <laughs> um, I knew it. He fell. Right, I got no way to get up. Cool. So. <laughs> this is not right. the first time this is happening. It's not right. What is wrong with your chair? Play it cool, LaValley. Cool. I thought he was kidding. Oh, I found my dice. <laughs> These ones are all clean. Uh, what did I learn on that occult check? You learned that you know about this, that this is the first book of The Lesser Key of Solomon. Yes. A grimoire that circulated in the 17th century, penned by somebody who used the pseudonym uh, King Solomon. Oh, that was a pseudonym. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And you know that this book has existed in pieces in all different ways well before the 17th century. A lot of scholars think 15th century, but that this was the first time it was kind of assembled together from different scrolls and books and folios into one uh, book. And how it works, you don't exactly know, but you start flipping through it. Let's go over to roll 20. It's very and interesting, right? Because like we've been kind of, yes. Night Floor stuff seemed very Carcosa-y, King and Yellowy. This is 
demon summoning. This is like old school cult stuff. Yes. Um, it, it maybe there's a tie-in, obviously, um, but it it's kind of seems separate. Yes. Uh, so this is it's not going to be a physical thing to go on your evidence board uh, because it it is going to be something that's uh, in your journal and it is the Ars Goetia you know that it details 72 demons and it lists them by name and then it has their symbols there is an actual uh, web URL in in the journal entry if you guys can see it whoa Um, and if you go to that uh, on on your web, if, if people are listening or watching and you're uh, at home, you can go to https colon slash slash demonweb101.com. <laughs> and, and then a demon s- will visit your home. Well, you'll essentially <laughs> see you. the book that you see right now. What you see. Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, that, was, that was saved. That was a bookmark page for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was easy. Just jump right back to it. This is kind of fun because it is an actual book I, and it al- will allow you to, this website will allow you to look at these entries and see the names, you know, of the various demons and, you know, see as characters if you uh, recognize, you know, any of these names and you can click on them and uh, and see more information. If you can't do it or it's not working for you, just let me know and I'll mention a few highlights. Can you mention a few highlights? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's loading. My DTT no. is struggling. Um, you see the name Marbus on there, uh, which you knew from the symbol upstairs. We could say, you, you know, if you went right to that, then great. And... If you go to it on this site, it says Marbus is described as the great president of hell, governing 36 <laughs> legions of demons. He answereth true on subjects hidden or secret, doth cause and heal diseases, teacheth mechanical arts, mm. and ah. changeth men into other shapes. He is depicted as a great lion, a lion. that under the conjurer's request changeth shape into a man. And then you see the symbol that you see uh, carved in up. To, oh my God, Cindy's got the actual book. You are horrifying. <laughs> and what's going on in this actual book? Oh my God. The oh exact my. fucking seals. Yeah. Yeah. What? Where did you get that's from your yeah. personal collection? Yeah. How do you I bought have this, this. Book? I got into I got into uh what did you get into? Well, Demon I got summoning? into Alistair Crowley. I was like fascinated with Alistair Crowley and oh. just his entire, I mean, like he created basically a, a religion of his own and like started this whole thing. His was very like Egyptian focused. It's very interesting. But I got into the lesser key of Solomon because I was like, this is the real shit. This is like the real deal, old school stuff. Um, and I've like, you know, flipped through it. I don't, when this came up in the game, did not remember this at all. Did not even remember that it existed. Mm. But now flipping back through, I'm literally looking at the person seal. Like oh it my, is what does it say? Marax. The 21st spirit is Marax. He is a great earl and president. He appeareth like a great bull with a man's face. His office is to make men very knowing in astronomy and all other liberal sciences. Also, he can give good familiars and wise knowing the virtues of herbs and stones, which be precious. It's interesting. It's like some of them seem good. And some of them just seem straight up like murderous demons. I think well, that you might just, have been the you, entry for Morax. You just read Morax, not oh, person. It was oh. under person. What's above? Oh, sorry. Person's person. on the previous page. <laughs> person. <laughs> but but pay, this is the one that was found in Abigail demon. Wright's apartment. So read okay. this one. The 20th spirit is person a great king. His appearance is calmly like a man with a lion's face, carrying a cruel viper in his hand and riding upon a bear. Going before him are many trumpets sounding. He knoweth all things hidden and can discover treasure and tell all things past, present, and to come. (laughs) He can take a body either human or aerial and answereth truly of all earthly things, both secret and divine. He's like, he's like God. Like he, it talks about the creation of the world. Wow. And, and that is like, so remember you just said he 
uh, he knoweth of hidden things, lost treasures. Remember all the crap that was in her apartment that seemed to like come from all these different weird places. Uh, a man, hold, pictured as a man holding a viper. As soon as you pulled that seal off the wall, the snake. there was that loud oh, thing and a God. man with a snake, snake was seen crossing a street and Holy. stopping a cab outside. Roger could see him. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> So <laughs> what's happening? What is going on? So these you people have this book. These people are summoning demons then. Right? It are seems they? or at least trying to. Trying or at least to. trying to. They believe in it, um, and they want the demons to give them things. It seems like it's working. This dude's building unworldly robots like yeah, if, if he's taught teaches about mechanical stuff that's where he learned it from but whenever you my understanding is in order to summon a demon there has to be a, an equal sacrifice it's like alchemy right you know um sometimes it's like isn't it normally you're sacrificing a person i guess you're gonna be a goat or, or maybe uh, they sacrifice themselves maybe they go to the night floors maybe they've like opened a portal and now they I don't know. Like raise their minds, their souls. Yeah, like sell your soul to a dope. Interesting. You guys, uh, well, there is, okay, okay. A lot um, going on here. I just yeah, there's shooting. There's just <laughs> shoot every day. <laughs> Kill it. Kill it. Um, if you guys continue to study this, this, do you want to continue to study this book or do you want to? Just go to go do something else because there are a lot of notes in in Marbus's hand. That's really the, primarily what you'll get if you spend time looking. You know, we'll put it in Vicky's purse. Let's go upstairs. My big mailbag. Oh, All right, so, so happy not already. look at the notes that Marbus wrote or Barbus <laughs> wrote rather. Okay. Um, we could all do different things too. Like someone could continue to study the notes, and I'll I, go. I think we're in the house. We could take this book with us. We should like continue that. We have a limited time for this for this house. Why? Right? Because we're going to have to leave and go to potentially the hospital. And also, uh, he's dead. I don't want to be caught in his house. Well, there's also, there might be something in his notes that would be applicable to us being while we're here. That's true. That's true. Okay. Should we split up then? I can read. I'm going upstairs. Hey. Hey, listen. I found the book, but it doesn't make any sense. If you want to keep reading it. I'm gonna go upstairs, see if that lady's there, or the tiny door. The tiny door became big. Oh, okay, do you want me to read All the right. book? I'm. You can do whatever you want. What do you want to do? Well, I don't have a cult. I feel like would I would it be worth it for Vicky to read this book if? What what you're going to get if you wait is you're going to see all of Barbus's notes, like his writing. Um, so. I don't know if it's an occult role or not, but it's not in another language. It's things that it's this his. guy was writing that, you know, you know pretty well. So, um, yeah, I think Vicky will keep looking at the book downstairs with like her phone flashlight and <clears throat> just try to, like Skid said, like if there's any pertinent information about what's here now, it could help. Also, us. I'll, I'll tell you one other thing that maybe catches your attention, Vicky. I said that there's notes in blue ink and there's notes in red ink. And you you can tell immediately with your skill that the notes in red ink are not Barbus's handwriting, and the writes in notes in blue ink are. So differentiating them might interest you. Yeah, mm. she's she makes she starts making like two lists. Oh, this is like reading House of Leaves. Yes, yes. this is yeah. awesome. Yes, yes, I love that's unreliable exactly like. narrators. Yeah, she starts <laughs> taking notes. Okay. The rest of you go upstairs. We'll leave Vicky for a moment with the Ars Goetia uh, digging into it. Do the three of you go up? Yes, um, we're gonna we're gonna check it out with uh, Roger and see what's going on up there. G- gun in your hand, Roger. Take the yeah. mining helmet. Two guns. <laughs> <laughs> Roger's got one in his mouth. He's got two guns in his hand, a gun in his mouth, and a mining helmet in his crotch. And he <laughs> begins walking upstairs, <laughs> right behind him. all right he gets upstairs you walk up and again there it's very dark up here you using a flashlight yeah i've got the mining helmet on my crotch 
Right. Your crotch light shines around. <laughs> Turn on your crotch light. <laughs> and you see uh, the same upstairs that you were in the day before and uh, during the daytime. Couple bedrooms. Doesn't seem to be anyone up here at first sense. You're um, incredible. Whatever that skill is. Uh, awareness. Is not, awareness. Alertness. Uh, alertness is not picking up uh, any danger or the presence of any people up here. He points to the door and he says, the scribe's in there. You point the you point the flashlight into the door and you see the remnants of smoke, a haze of smoke in the room that seems to be the source of the tobacco-ish smell. A very oh. thin smoke. <laughs> oh. Walk up to the door. Describe shining the light up and in. You turn around and come in, and there you see on the on this table is the scribe, this pointy looking machine that has two ink pots and little mechanical pincers that hold quills, two quills out to the side. And below it, papers everywhere, stacks of red books, little red books, and um, tons of uh, blank paper, and then all kinds of written paper all scattered all over the floor with a lot of like running ink, ink blots. Um, in these, this is where you saw the incorrect attempts at the invitation, etc. Excuse me. Um, yeah, so that's what that's what you see as you come back into that room. Okay. And there's no source of the smoke. There's no source of the smoke. It it gives you the vibe that like somebody was smoking a, a clove in here or something, and then and you just miss them. Like that kind of vibe. Like somebody was just here having a smoke. Hi. What time is it? Um, you can tell me. Okay. It's it's night. Yeah, so it's you guys night. arrived at night. Did you arrive at uh nine o'clock or did you arrive at midnight? Like it's up to you. Right. Yeah, I don't know, ten. Okay. Uh, let's so the then, bedroom. yeah, let's say it's had to have been at least a half hour because that's how long it took Neil to piece together the statue. So, say it's it's almost eleven. What time did the night floors activate back in New York? Was it at midnight or was it? <laughs> it's at a, it's the dark? second the sun goes below the horizon. Okay. So the sun's below the higher horizon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's. Uh, and when when we were here last time, it wasn't night. When you first walked in, no, it was daytime. It was daytime, okay. yeah. All right, can I do uh, a quick biology check on the smoke just to see if I can identify anything about it? Mm hmm. Uh, oh, 69 over 60. <laughs> nice. Yeah, there's nothing that stands out about it. And there's nothing written that Scribe hasn't left anything written on their, on its desk or anything? Yeah, it's all on the ground below it. It's oh, like all kinds of stuff that's all just sort of attempts. Can we read through it? Yeah. And see, yeah. All right. I'm, do I need a roll? I need a search uh, No, you don't need a roll. Okay. Um, yeah, I want to see what's, what's what it's writing. If it's written. Uh, yeah. It's nothing that I haven't. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I've mentioned this before to Roger, but you, so you get there and this is where, Bobby, you see what Roger said, what has made you so upset. Right. You see your name on a on a paper and you see Dr. Neil Bachman and an address and. Vicky, like, so you see all the names together. You see Roger, Roger and you're putting together. This is the real names of your team and their home addresses. Shows it to Bachman, or shows it to uh, Murnau. Well, now you know his name. Check it out. <laughs> now <laughs> yeah. you know his name. You, Neil you, Bachman. <laughs> yeah. I so presume. <laughs> you pass it over to Neil, and as you do, you look down, and you see a page, and it has your father's name and his home address on it. Holy shit. Roll a sanity check. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, Ooh, 38, uh, 38 under, oh, thank God, 41. Oh, man. Oh, oh, oh. man. Okay. All right. But yeah, so how do you feel when you see this, this next development? So, I mean, 
Bobby always thinks that his father has something to do or some some covert mission going on that he's never aware of. So he's not sure if he's related to this or if he's like in league with these people or if he's like a target of these people. He can't really be sure, but he knows this is this is leading to something. This is leading to something that, that he that might help him uh, get the better of his dad. So he's just he's 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 suddenly alert alert to everything right now. Just wired wired and ready wired and ready on the same page just below you see something that might even surprise you I'm not sure you tell me you see the name Vasily Kremensky holy shit and then under it aka Radic oh shit so did, did you know Radek's real name because y- you were so close to Mr. Kremensky or did you only ever know his operational name for, for st- safety purposes? No, B- Bobby knew, knew his real name because he was, he, he was close to Kremensky. He, he knew a lot about his background, but he, he doesn't know how Radek fits into this. He thought that was just strictly CIA. Mm-hmm. So this is, this is something intense here. He's not, he's not sure what to make of this. Um, he just makes note of it, doesn't say anything to the other guys, but it's definitely, he's going to have to follow this up later. With okay. Okay. Uh, Neil, you get a hold of this paper. You see your name and your home address uh, at your uh, apartment in, I can't remember where it was. I thought that it was Upper West, but it wasn't, right? Tribeca. It was Tribeca, right. So you see your Tribeca loft, whatever, your, your high penthouse address on this thing. Uh, and your actual name. But yeah, and then you see... All right, so uh, as you look at this, as you're in this room and you can look at this closer with a flashlight, you see that th- that there is there seems to be a slot where... And it's two different sizes. A slot where you can put in a sheet of paper and it's, and it's empty right now. It seems like you put a paper into it. And there's also a slot that seems fit for a book where you can put a book into it. Oh, like okay. load the printer so to speak Uh, right but right now it's empty and the machine is inert oh man is there room for us to put our butt in it (laughs) (laughs) no unfortunately no there's no butt room we can't even put our butt in it (laughs) (laughs) this printer's lame (laughs) (laughs) this guy sucks (laughs) let's rip some more shots of gasoline and take some coffees (laughs) of our butt (laughs) What kind of office party is this? Uh, <laughs> this, and I we all go in the bedroom. The robot. Uh, you want to go in the other bedroom? Yes. Okay. Does this look like a cult symbol when I do this? <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks like. <laughs> uh, Roger goes into the other bedroom <gasps> while he leaves and goes into the other bedroom. Let's go back down to Vicky for a moment. Vicky, you, you we see you looking at a note in blue ink. It says D. D R D the three letters D R D middle name for us F O R A S dash 29 legions and then in parentheses employees question mark logic ethics and precious stones Recover lost things. And then in all caps, makes sense. Um, okay, well, DRD. I mean, Vicky, Vicky has, her art is in like forgery and her forensics and stuff is all in like written code. So I think she would understand shorthand and can kind of like conceive yeah. that. I'm gonna assume as Sydney, the player, but also as Vicky, Dr. Dallin is mm-hmm. DRD. And Do- Dr. Dallin, middle name for us. For and you us. remember when you first Google searched the thing, his name is do- on the website, Dr. Richard F. Dallin. Okay, so oh, that whoa. makes sense. Middle name is for us. If you go to Demon Web 101, That's you'll one see for us is yeah. one of the demons. He's oh a demon. Okay, so, so Dr. Dr. Dallin is a demon? Dr. Dallin is a demon. All Dr. doctors Dallin are demons. Um, hey. Huh? Oh, sorry. I didn't see you there, Neil. He is a powerful <laughs> president of You're hell. You're upstairs. 
Being obeyed by 29 legions of demons, he teacheth logic and ethics in all their branches, the virtues of all herbs and precious stones, and how to make make a man witty, eloquent, and long-lived. He can discover treasures and recover lost things. He is depicted as a strong man. Okay. He can recover lost things like sanity, maybe. Mm. Uh, oh, interesting. Ooh. Okay, so Dr. Dallin is a demon, 29 legions, his employees is what Barbus is thinking equates to that in our reality. Which- so also, I think you should, as a law enforcement investigator, I think you should also say, Barbus is thinking Dr. Dallin is a demon. I don't know if I'd start with just Dr. Dallin is a demon. Barbus is thinking Dr. <laughs> Dallin is a demon. Yeah. Vicky's in it. Um, <laughs> but it would, <laughs> she's just reading it, she goes, it does make sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So he's obviously a demon. Um, (laughs) The employees thing is interesting, though. Like if he is, you know, some sort of powerful figure, like are these employees then, you know, like lesser demons? Like, you know, are they all intertwined? Are they actually like demons incarnate? It is interesting. This is also crazy. <laughs> yeah. You're upstairs. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Barbus is Barbus is crazy. crazy, but it's um do you guys ever see that movie Skeleton Key with Kate Hudson? It's like a voodoo horror movie. No one yeah, saw that it's movie. A Stephen no. King uh, book, right? I think it is. I think it is. Or a short story. Ooh. But um basically sure, like yeah. she's in the south in like the bayou area. She doesn't believe in voodoo, whatever. She ends up staying in this house and it's like very voodoo centric, magic centric, and she's worries that she's gonna like get caught up in it or something so she creates like a circle of salt around herself and she starts to like kind of freak out but because she starts doing that she invites it in because she now like believes in it and she ends up like by making the circle of salt she ends up trapping herself in the house which is exactly what like Mm. the demon wanted um (laughs) so it's fascinating like vicky now reading this she's like you know, getting into it, but she's like, I don't believe this is not, but, <laughs> Ab- but in reality, she's like, but Abigail believed it and Bobbis believed it and they are gone. And they've been to the night floors. Like I've been to the night floors. It is very eerie. Uh, what were it you going to say, Skid? Eerie. I was thinking of Skeleton Crew. The Stephen oh. King book. Oh, oh, okay. So maybe Skeleton yeah. Key is not. Yeah. But yeah, so that's um so Vicky takes note of that then, of this this blue note. She kind of recopies it down. Um is there anything else I see in this moment? No, we'll come back to you in a moment, but first okay. we're gonna take a quick break and then go upstairs to see what happens as Roger walks back into the room with the seal. Stick with us just a second.
We return to Dr. Barbus's house as Vicky sits downstairs with her phone light going through the R's. Go in! <laughs> 70 t- or 52 page uh, poorly printed booklet of, uh, of this lesser tome of King Solomon or whatever. Uh, roughly translated, it is the arts of sorcery is what that means. And Vicky is working her way through it, but we're going to go now upstairs to where Roger, Bobby, and Neil are searching the upstairs bedrooms. Roger, you walk into uh, the other bedroom where the, uh, the seal was. You see the seal etched on the floor, and you see the hibachi grill yeah, with a bunch of uh, papers uh, in it undisturbed you don't see any people and you see the closet closed I open the closet you open the closet and you find it the same as before small in the back small door red door set into the cinder block behind the drywall and in front of it small bars as if it's a little mini jail cell I get down on the floor and I listen at the door. You listen at the door and you roll a roll a um, listen. Is listen in this game? Uh, or is it just, no, uh, it's just alertness? Alertness. Or, oh, or yeah. Uh, Search alert. doesn't seem Alertness right. is fine. Just alertness. using your hearing uh, to 35 see. under 82. <laughs> yeah, so you, nice. you get down and you're listening. I can hear people's blood type. <laughs> 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 you you hear the oh, the vaguest of conversations coming through the door, but it sounds like it's really far away. So far away, you can't make out a single word. But you feel like you hear a male voice. You feel like you hear a female voice. Um, sort of friendly chatting, basically. And I can't open the door. You can. Okay, can I open it? Mm-hmm. Are you going to use your hand? Uh, but previously, you had used like a hanger and pushed it through yeah, the I'd bars. Yeah, I prefer to do, I'll take another hanger if it's, I, the one I didn't use before was there and reach it through. Yeah, I'm afraid something's going to like clamp down on my hand. You you pop it open, and you are looking in what looks like like a ground like a vent at the floor of a inside of a bookshop. You look across, you see books stacked on on uh, shelves but like you have very very limited view of what's in here because you just immediately see a shelf and everything else is just the vague sense of people in a shop is kind of what you get so creepy can I like <laughs> knock on the door sure yeah I'll just kind of like rap on it with the thing okay rolling dice oh god <laughs> You knock, and then you sit there for 30 seconds, a minute. Nothing seems to change. Doesn't seem like anyone hears you. I just go, Hey! (laughs) Hey! Come to the tiny door! (laughs) (laughs) tiny amazon man i wonder if roger is doing anything stupid up there (laughs) hey (laughs) bobby Bobby, Bobby asks uh messiah messiah what are you what are you doing who are you talking to there's a tiny door that leads to another place i'm just yelling in it (laughs) (laughs) why what are you doing (laughs) Let's <laughs> see if they can hear me. It doesn't seem like anyone can hear you. It doesn't seem like they react. Nothing changes in the rhythm of conversation. Um, but it does sound like two of the voices are getting closer. Okay. Just keep listening. Then. Go ahead and give me another roll. Uh, 23 under 82. You get close to the bars, listening, and you hear what sounds like a man saying, the the patsu, 
the Pat Zoo. That is the way out. A woman silently agrees. Hmm. Interesting. And you hear... You feel like the woman's voice is vaguely familiar. Um, roll, a, roll an intelligence check. Oh, dear. Uh, 69. <laughs> uh, over uh, 40. <laughs> okay. You, you keep listening and you're straining to hear and to remember what this voice might be attached to, who this person might be, and then suddenly there's a shadow that comes on the floor, kind of right in front of this little door that you're looking into. Okay. And then in a heartbeat, bam, right in front of the door comes a clown face that just like bends down and looks in at no. Roger. No. What, what, what do you do? I immediately pull the trigger and shoot it. Oh without even the slightest hesitation. <laughs> Wait, the whole time you had the gun yeah. up there too? <laughs> I'm just like, come on! <laughs> All right, so yeah, you reach out, you pull the trigger, and in that same instant, it seems like the uh, the clown head vanishes, oh, and God. all these books start to like fall down, <laughs> and just like a <laughs> pile in front of the, the door where uh, that thing just was. Give me a, a sanity check. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, if this was a proper movie, it would be like, Whoa! Like this horrible sound would like scare the shit out of you the second that face came down. I just failed 63 over 60. Oh, 63 oh. over 60. Okay. Uh, take one point of sanity damage. All right. I'm going to From take the it. unnatural. <laughs> Bobby's just going to decide, what are you shooting at? What are you shooting at? Uh, uh, fuck, there was a clown. There was a clown. <laughs> and I shot at its face. Did you, did you get it? I don't know. Books, books. He turned you, into you books. You got it, right? Kill you it. killed it, right? He turned Kill into books. Thing. This place sucks! <laughs> uh, and he just gets up, and he's not feeling good, and he's kind of like gesturing wildly with the gun <laughs> near Bobby. <laughs> so, whoa, I, mean, I just saw this. Uh, I saw it, and he's pointing the gun okay, at Bobby. Okay, says, okay, this, 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 uh, people talking, there's a woman's okay. voice that I, I, I remember, but I don't All right. remember. All right, and calm down, uh, calm down. there's a clown face All right, easy, scratching easy. his head with the gun. Look, I just can't. Something ain't right. Let's, uh, let's put the safety on real quick before uh, we keep searching, huh? Yeah. You ready? Okay. Fuck. Vicky from downstairs, you heard a gunshot. She closes the book uh, and runs upstairs with it. Gun also drawn. She points the gun in Roger's mouth. What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Should I kill Roger? <laughs> <laughs> Is he fucking compromised? Me and Bernard are thinking, I don't know, what do you think? <laughs> uh, no, she comes upstairs, though, to the doorway where I, you're all, like, in that smaller room, the little scribe room, and she just turns in and goes, what was that? Messiah. What was that? What's going Messiah. on? I, Messiah saw, saw he, uh, I saw, I saw a clown. I saw a clown in the tiny door. And I, uh, I shot at him. Roger, get out of, get away from there. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. I don't, I, I just, I, I lost a little time there. And Roger, you keep hearing in your head, Patzu, Patzu. Does anybody know what the name Patzu, Patzu is Patzu. the way out? Patzu, do you know what Patzu means? Anybody Pat. heard the word Patzu? Vicky's Patzu. like flipping through the book. Did that come up? No, you've never seen that word. None of you have ever heard that word as part of the investigation so far. I wanted That's... to call check on it just to see if it uh, failed. It's uh, 57. Okay. Um, Can I do oh, an art I... check? Yes. I've got a call too. I'm going to Can I call. do... Patsu sounds like a demon. Can I do I a f- forensics like a, like a lettering? Is it an anagram or is it like a rearrangement of something? Sure. All right. What'd you get there, Neil? 
I rolled a one under 93. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> a one under 93. Get um, the hell out of this. Just eked, eked one out. <laughs> uh, well, oh, geez, with a one, I think I would have to, I guess I would have to say that you can't put, you don't know exactly what Patsu is, but you have this sense, this feeling like Patsu is actually a, like a remedy, uh, like a, like an herb or a, a potion, like a, a an elixir, maybe hmm. for lack of a better term. Um, it's giving you this vague feeling like it's some sort of um, elixir. And the reason you would know that from art is because you vaguely remember it being part of some play. It was like in a play that you heard about where uh, a character was trying to desperately find Patsu. And it's some sort of like life-giving elixir or something like that. But again, you could be misremembering, but it, it seems like that's vaguely the, the memory you have of it. Could I do a occultism check as well? Sure. That's... Nope. Okay. Uh, Vicky, you did forensics. Is that what you were doing? Yeah, I have forensics or I have like art forgery. Um, I don't know if this is either of them, but I did get a 30 under 54 or a 30 under 40. On what? Uh, well, it depends. Do you think forensics would make sense? Like trying to determine like... Okay, lettering. so yeah, if you want to determine the lettering, it does not seem like an anagram, and it just seems like an like a like a name of a thing. P A T, okay. uh, and it's P A T Z U. I would tell you, Patsu. Patsu kind of sounds Japanese, like Patsu. yeah, or like the Kutsu vine, that yeah. like super invasive vine. Oh uh, right, Patsu that's kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's my my anime. Hi, so this guy. Uh, okay, so Vicky kind of, she's looking through that book, and she's like, I don't, it's, it's, I don't know, it's not, I found some interesting stuff in here, but that's not, I don't know what that is. What is going on here? What is going on? I don't Get understand. Out. There's like a a, 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 a gateway, but it's a gateway that we can't walk through. It's, maybe he was just using this to, to pass information, but was he receiving uh, books from them as well? And, and what, what's with this woman that I saw in the window? Where is this woman who was smoking in the other room? What is going on? And he's just going to leave this room. And is there a room up here that he didn't explore or a closet? No, there's no room you haven't explored. Uh, <clears throat> and there's there's no closet. And as he says, what's going on here? And starts to go in the other room. Roger, you just stop dead in your tracks as your alertness fires off. And you hear clearly in the distance the sound of police sirens. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, we gotta get the fuck out of here now. <laughs> <laughs> None of you have heard it yet. What? What, what, what is now, it? Now, now, now. Get back Why? door. Start hopping fences. Let's get the fuck out. Grab everything you need now. Okay. Oh, well, all right. What? And just uh, da, 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 downstairs. I think um, maybe Vicky spies the papers that have our name on it. Right. Oh, yeah. And we, she says, she, yeah. yeah, she says, makeshift, get those, g gather those up. All right. Bobby grabs a whole bunch of those papers up the floor. <sighs> stuff to Okay. That's so roll, roll, roll. That's so I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about burning this house down. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm we should about lighting the gasoline five. on yeah, fire. No, that's a good idea. I think we. I mean, we can't uh, because we can't let the police find this shit. Right. Right. Yeah. So we. This is we our time. The, the gasoline. The gasoline. The gasoline. The gasoline. Let's light it. Yeah. You know, you have sixty seconds. Yeah. Jesus. Vicky runs just, downstairs. Vicky's running down with the book. Pulls out his zippo. And he just like uh, grabs a, a rag and like douses it in the gasoline, lights the rag on fire, leaves the other end of the gasoline, and runs out the back door. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay, uh, Bobby, give me a dexterity times five roll. Oh, God. We're going to see right. if you're actually able to gather up all this stuff in the few uh, seconds you have. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, that is, oh, 66 times five. Um, 
So that'd be 55, 55 to 66 over so it's 55. a fumble. That is a Damn. critical failure. No, Bobby, no. Oh, so you go, to grab, you go to grab the papers and you got them all and you shove them into your thing. And then it's as the, you're running out of the room, just one slips out and it's oh, got damn. your father's name on it and oh, Vasily Kraminsky. Oh, and shit. it just falls out behind you and you start heading down the stairs and you hear as this gasoline catches fire and immediately catches some curtains on fire in the in the kitchen right Roger like you went out the back and lit a fire yeah. while everybody was still inside <laughs> Jesus oh, man. Man. Uh, what's no, Neil I, I doing mean- I was still letting him come through. I hope. Yeah, I know, I know. But <laughs> <laughs> is anybody sticking behind, or were you running out with God, Roger? No. We're running out. We're running out full speed. Vicky Retro. was running downstairs. Yeah, to help Roger with the gasoline. Like they both were like gasoline, and then they like ran downstairs. So she's with him, same time. Yeah, we're following close behind. I'm following close behind with like papers falling out of my shirt and jacket and everything. Yeah, I <laughs> tried to scoop up as many papers and like the pieces the porcelain pieces like just everything that I can in a rush before I booking out of here okay go ahead and give me a dexterity times five and then uh what is Vicky taking just the book the book um yeah I mean there was nothing else that she was kind of looking at I don't think it would make sense for her to like grab something else on the way out okay what'd you get Neil uh 23 under 60 okay Great. So you're actually able to recover all of the ceramic pieces and get them into like a little, uh, your little bag, uh, your little medical bag and get out the back door. And then (laughs) Roger sets a fire. Then what do you do? Your cars are a couple blocks away and you're in the backyard right now. And now all of you hear police sirens. Shit. You right, see like, scatter, behind scatter, you, scatter. The, in the house scatter. behind you, there's a high fence that you can't see through, an opaque fence, and on the other side of it, uh, but you can see it from the doorway when you come out because it's up on a stoop before you go down. You see the lights on in that house and a woman, an old woman in that Shit. house, just looking out the window at you guys. Jesus. Um, but you, you know you're in darkness. Like, your okay. features yeah. would probably be obscured, but okay. Good what for that do you do lady. from there? Uh, hop the fence and just it, Roger's like scatter. Okay, yeah. Um, so you all go in different directions. Yeah, yeah. I'll, Bobby takes uh, the opposite way, going to the other next door fence, uh, other next door yard. Just runs into that yard. It's still dark over there. Roll stealth check. <laughs> oh shit! I don't have a lot of stealth. <laughs> uh, I'm not very stealthy. Uh, oh god, I'm rolling a lot of nines. Uh, Ninety one. Damn it, Oof. dude. I, he's, Dice are broken. All right. Uh, so you go exciting. running over to this other house. We're just following Bobby for a second, and we see immediately motion sensor lights from the house next door just like click Damn. on brightly uh, while you're in, and you're like, ah! And you, it. It, it scares you, and you stumble into a child's swing set and just immediately like go into some swings, and you're like, ah! And you're caught in the swings. Oh, Damn it. Vicky, which way did you run? You are such a buffoon, Bobby. I swear. <laughs> I'm not a field guy. I'm not a field guy. (laughs) I think Vicky is just going to go to the main road, like that the house is on. Okay. But just in the opposite direction of where the cars, like the sirens are coming from. Roll an alertness. Okay. To know exactly which way they're coming from. Can't see them quite yet. Okay. 49 under 52. Okay. So you know the way that they're coming and you head the opposite way. Running? Or no, walking casually. Walking casually. She's okay. like, oh, she's, she's doing not. the nighttime neighbor walk, you know? Like, yeah. oh, I just had to get out of the house, the kids. <laughs> <laughs> at 1130 at night. Yeah. Uh, give me a stealth check and uh, to give yourself a plus 20%. Thank God, because we all know Vicky's stealth ain't great. <laughs> Oh God, seventy four, thirty one. But she's not trying to be. I'm not trying to like hide. But maybe she. D- the stealth rolls are all about. It's it's partially a luck roll, but it's t- it's okay. tainted by your stealth, and it's for if neighbors happen to like turn okay. on lights and look out and whatever. Oh. There's they they hear police sirens. You know what I mean. So. Um, you see uh, you are cross you happen to be crossing under a street light (sighs) and you see a man that looks out uh, the window and he seems to look right at you and sees your face okay but I'm being casual yep and you just keep walking (laughs) Neil I'm gonna go into the sewer 
I'm gonna find a storm drain and just jump what? in the sewer. Dive Damn. in head first. Head first. He does have a 33 sanity. Let's <laughs> let's, let's, let's yeah. take this into consideration. This He's seems like the best possible thing to do. Oh, in holy Neil's shit! Mind. Yeah. Okay. So just out front of the house, there's a sewer grate. And a storm drain, and Neil is throwing himself down and inside of it. Oh, fuck. Now is when you have to tell me if you're actually doing that or if you're just kidding. No, I am. I'm going okay. into the sewer. So Neil is going to slip down into the sewer. Uh, I'm not going to roll a stealth check. I'm going to say you got out of there before any neighbors saw you, and you fall into the fucking sewer yeah. system. That's gross. And we'll go from Neil's perspective as these lights start coming up and you see them reflecting through the drain that you just dropped down into. Uh, Immediately, you're overcome with the stench of uh, just like rotting food and garbage and stuff that's down there. Uh, This isn't like the... um, the uh, septic sewer, right? This is just like sort of the storm drain. And so it's not unbearable, but it is pretty gross. And uh, and you see a, like a, a, a long pipe that follows along the street. But yeah, you see the cars are pulling up now. Bobby, oh God, I'm dude, you got to pass a check. What are you gonna going to do? Ju- I, I need to get out of this yard and yeah. get into the next adjacent yard, hopefully, I, I can do that without causing a freaking ruckus all the way. <laughs> so okay. What are you rolling? I, need, uh, uh, I, I would have to roll another. Dexterity, or is there something athletics? Is there? Yeah. Something? Let me do dexterity. I'm gonna. I'm gonna cli- unleash myself from this kid swing and okay. bolt for the another yard. Uh, my dexterity. The cops five, are now right? pulling up front. You can see their lights. Oh dexterity times five, right? Dexterity yes. times five. All right. Come on. Oh god, 30 under 55. Oh god, yes. all right, huge. So he gets out of the tangle and jumps over a fence behind the house and you you're now cut off from the lights. They can't they can't see you and you're huddled I, down in this backyard for a moment. Freeze. So, so and you freeze? Silent. Yeah, I, well at least like I'm I'm waiting until I can find a like an opening to get out okay. without being yes. seen. Roger. Yeah. Roger's like Carl Lewis hopping fences. It's <laughs> 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 like a hurdle. <laughs> just pulling the fence. Hurdling. All right, give me an athletics check. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, and oh, dude, this is going to be rough. It's an athletics check at minus 20% because uh, you have a hurt ankle, if you oh, recall. That's right. Oh, All right yeah. This is actually a tough roll for me then. Um, uh, Success. 35 under 41. That's in my yeah. athletics is 61. 35 wow, under so 41. Amazing. So even with the sore ankle, you're like, oh, <laughs> you're, fuck, fuck. Fuck. you're clearing <laughs> fences, pushing that joint way past where it was supposed to be. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. <laughs> and uh, and you get out of there. Bobby, we go back to you. You're pushed up against this fence and you hear, is anybody in the house? Is anybody in the house? And you just see, you hear, the sound of fire like licking out of the windows stand back stand go back into your homes go back into your homes so tell um, gas more up. sirens begin in the distance <laughs> as fire trucks uh, begin to descend on the area vicky where are you how many blocks away are you running yet are you still walking is this casual <laughs> Vicky, once she's out of like the residential street light area she starts running. I mean, when no one can see her anymore, she's running to get as much distance from the house. And maybe she even turns. She's she also doesn't know where she is. Like she's just yeah. taking turns, like zigzagging. Well, you've got a cell phone. Yeah, she has. Oh, that's true. She has a cell phone. So yeah, she takes out her cell phone, and once she's like, I would say like six six streets away, residential okay. streets, she. Calls an Uber. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> to smart. go, uh, to go to like Copley Square, somewhere just like open location, uh, and just get out of there. Okay. Vicky calls an Uber. Neil is in the sewer. How do we get him out of there? Uh, Neil just starts. <sighs> <laughs> He I'm also assuming, has a cell phone. He I'm assuming you pull out a phone flashlight. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I'm like running. I've got my bag like clutched to my chest and I'm running like splashing through the sewer with my cell phone flashlight out. <laughs> oh my Keeping God. an eye out for a rat 
that can teach me martial arts. <laughs> as long as I'm down here. I knew it. A crossover. We never knew we needed. Classic. Classic. Uh, the rats begin to tell you to follow them. They're like, follow us. Follow us. Okay. Follow us. This way. <laughs> we will lead you to Narnia. <laughs> trust the rats. Safety. You trust the rats. Trust, trust us. Do, do you trust them? <laughs> I do. <laughs> you begin to follow the rats, and we close out from Neil. And I don't know when or if we'll ever see him. Again. <laughs> We go back to Bobby. He's up against a fence and he's only like a yard and a half away. Like he's, and you hear all of this commotion. What do you do? Neighbors okay. in that, in the house that you're in the house next door, lights start coming on. Okay. Okay. Uh, where is the car that we left? The car is two, two blocks, blocks away. away. Two blocks away. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to orient myself and try and make it to the car. Through backyards, through backyards, or are you going to walk out to the, the opposite street? I, I, uh, mm, I can do that. I can do if I can if I can walk out. You to can the get out onto street, the next block by just walking through the me. side yard of yeah, the house you're in. Yeah, I'll do that, and then I'll I'll, I'll just pretend like I'm also like Vicky, like I'm a casual like bystander. Like, what's going on? I heard the I heard the ruckus. Give me a stealth check plus twenty oh. percent. It's oh. nighttime. You're just walking ruckus. by, but people are oh. turning their lights on. 32 under 41. Oh. What's all the wow. ruckus? His shirt is soaked with gasoline. <laughs> yeah, what's going on? Is everybody okay? I'm like, <laughs> so party got, or got something? Got like papers from the guy's house. <laughs> oh my God. This is weird. <laughs> this is weird. This is, this is weird. Huh? Does a homeowner's Your association know like about this? Your eyebrows are like singed off from the fire. You're like, what's going on? What's going on here, guys? <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, Bobby, yeah. you are able to double back and find your way around back to your car. Okay. Roger, you are able to find your way back to your car, and it's by Bobby, and you guys connect and meet at the cars. Uh, and you see two blocks away, there's just smoke in the air, flickering firelight, and siren lights just Jesus. going off like crazy. Roger's like, where's Maybelline? I, where's I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. They ran off. Uh, we got to find them. They've got to be hiding somewhere. Look um, around. Uh, Call him. I'm gonna. Bobby pulls out his phone. Uh, I'll call. Can we I'll text? call Maybelline. This, yeah, we're talk, We're texting, or we're, we're calling. Yeah, we're. Who's Roger call, calling? You call Mer now. I'll call Maybelline. All right, I'll call Mer now. It rings in the sewer. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I can't no. answer the phone. I'm using it as a flashlight. Yeah, actually, <laughs> actually, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll say you just don't get an answer then, Bob. No answer. Damn it, it's not answering. And Vicky, uh, you're uh, standing on the side of the road when Roger calls. I double click my iPhone so that it goes straight to voicemail and you hear, <laughs> hello, this is Vicky Ricci. If you need to leave a message, please do. If you don't, please hang up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the instructions. What a weirdo! I didn't know how to use this phone. So that was thing. like her fourth time trying to do the message, and she was so frustrated that she like yeah. gave up. It was so hard to do. She wanted to sound natural. Um, oh, actually, and uh, Bobby, he if he lets, does he go all the way to voicemail? Oh, yeah. I, I guess it would have to go to voicemail before. Before okay, I leave then the he code. Hears, uh, it says clicks. It's like, hey, this is Bill Murray. Uh, I assume you're trying to reach uh, my friend here, Neil Bachman. Uh, he's pretty busy oh and uh, he's not very funny. <laughs> he's, got, he's got a message from Bill Murray out here. Isn't that Bill Murray? Human, human check to see if that was really Bill Murray. <coughs> Roger will leave a message. The, uh, the tigers have left the cage. But the chessmen are back at the van. <laughs> See, the thing about codes is that both parties have to know what they mean. She'll know what it means. Vicky, She'll know. Just Vicky codes. texts Roger. She just doesn't want to talk out loud because she doesn't want to draw attention to herself. But she texts Roger, um, Copley Square, 15 minutes. Okay. He texts back. Text back. The chessmen received your message. <laughs> she doesn't answer. She doesn't answer. <laughs> okay, Bobby and Roger get into cars and drive off. And we'll cut 
to Copley Square and no one, basically no one's around. It's, it's like 1230 and it's super quiet on the street, but it's well lit. And uh, there's cars like kind of driving by, but there are not many pedestrians on the street. And you guys pull up in your two cars and an Uber and the Uber just uh, drops you off, Vicky. No word from Neil. What do you do? Uh, we, we have to go find Murno. You can't just leave him there. Uh, I mean, we can't. We can't go back. We cannot go back. back. <sighs> Murno is smart. He's smart. Okay, he will. Yeah. He should know to come back here. He's not. It's not red. It, he's, he doesn't have service. It's not he, going through. We we didn't have a fallback point, did we? He could be at the car. Maybe he took the car. Oh, wait, you took the car. I took the car. That's why I mean he might be wandering the neighborhood looking for our car. I don't know. Did you text him about the tigers and the chessmen? <laughs> <laughs> no one knows what that means. I don't know what you're talking about. Masayo, no one knows what that means. We went over this. I'm worried. <laughs> I am worried about you. With so the door. Let's text him I, about the chessmen. Look, all right, if if Murnau can make it out on his own, he's going to have to make it back to his hotel, right? Right. Okay, so we go okay. there. All right. We'll go there. We'll wait for him in the lobby. Put some drinks on his room. <laughs> that's <laughs> funny. That's a great that's idea. That's a wanted. funny thing to do to a friend. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> He'll get a kick out of it. So we go back to his hotel. We go to the Ritz Carlton. The Ritz Carlton, and uh, <laughs> not far from Copley of Square. Gasoline and f- soot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks like you just committed an arson, which you did. <laughs> we just roll into the lobby. Too old fashioned. <laughs> uh, the bar is closed. There is no one in the Fuck. lobby. All right. It is twelve. You know, it's almost one in the morning. It's Boston. And you are <laughs> exhausted. Yeah, I, maybe uh, I should this just... This day started... <sighs> go home. With like... Oh, this day started with going to the hospital and looking into the gym bag. Oh, oh God. God. So, oh God. you know, so oh basically God. the going to his house and surveilling it um, at night, all that. So I think, I think that's how it went down. And so, yeah, I mean... It's a long day. The, the whole interrogation, you murdered him tonight. Like, it's, it's a lot. I mean, we've got to post up and wait until Murnau gets back. We can't actually, just actually, like uh, can't. I'm sorry. That can't be, that can't be accurate. Oh. Yeah, that can't be accurate. I can't. Well, it must be a whole new day. But anyway, uh, it's one in the morning. We get away. We, f- we got away from Murnau. We got away from Murnau. Or, or at least one of us does. But yeah. he doesn't, uh, Roger will not abandon his unit. Yeah. We need um, to, we need to excuse me. Can I help you? No. And a young woman uh, that works at the hotel in the lobby walks up to you. You're the only four people sitting in the lobby. Four? Awesome. Three. Did she sit no, with us? No, four. was sitting right next to you on the chair. Uh, she says, can you help me? And he says, no. Are you guests of the hotel? We're, uh, we're waiting on a guest for at the hotel. He's a friend of ours. We got is... separated from him at the bar, so we're afraid oh. that he doesn't we're afraid that he doesn't know how to get back to the hotel. We're... Could I just have the guest's name, please, so I can make sure that he's a guest at the hotel? Yes. And, uh, yeah, you can tell him. We know oh, you know it. Yeah, you know, know it. it. Yeah, Dr. Uh, Neil he, Bachman. Uh, yeah, uh, Dr. Neil Bachman. Ah, okay. Excellent. And she walks over and goes into her computer and says, thank you so much. Um, I, he is a, a guest here, and you're welcome to wait for him here. Do you have any uh, complimentary waters back there? You, why, yes, we do. That absolutely. Three, sir. please. Four. I'll take six. Could I get one with whiskey in it? Could I get you six can. waters? <laughs> get one with whiskey. And a whiskey in it. for my friend. And, and she whiskey. just laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> and she'll pull out a half a dozen water bottles, and she brings them out. And it's like, here you go. Give me all the cash. Of the Ritz car. <laughs> you pull out a <laughs> gun no, and tell her to you. give you all the cash? <laughs> no, no. No, no, he does not. Because of all the cash that it comes out of a lot of cash. Give me all the cash and then tell her to give me some towels. Our friend's been drinking. He's been drinking heavily tonight. 
Kidder, he's a joker. Put the gun no, away. I'm Roger. just kidding. That's a fake one. <laughs> yeah. he's a I'm good, just kidding. Good hey, one, it's just not, Josh. It's not 1995 anymore. Okay, you can't just pull guns out. It's not funny. She's right. laughing. <laughs> she laughed. <laughs> she gets it. She gets it. Another hour goes by. Okay, I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Maybelline's got no love for And it Maybelline, it's two in the morning. You, you head back to your place. I think she tells them like if the you place guys... where you killed the guy last night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what? Maybelline like, curls up on the couch in the uh, lobby and falls asleep. Um, Excuse me, ma'am. I'm sorry, you can't sleep here, ma'am. She's I'm just tired. waiting. She's tired. Uh, can you just sit up, please? I'm sorry, we just can't. I'm not allowed to lo- let people lay down on the furniture. I can't lay down, but I can sit? Yes. Show me in your handbook where it says that. I don't think I don't think anyone's ever told you that. It's fine. Right. It's fine. I'll just sit in this big, oversized, strange armchair that they put in the lobbies, and I'll... I will close my eyes sitting up. Thank you so much. <laughs> and she goes back behind the desk. Roger just follows her. What? <laughs> she looks behind her. <laughs> <laughs> she goes back and stands behind the desk and she's looking at you. Oh, God. I don't like her. <laughs> he says. <laughs> Makeshift. <laughs> okay. I, I get that. All right. Maybe, maybe there's no sense in all three of us waiting. How about you guys? You guys can go back to my room if you need to sleep. I'll wait here for Renau. Where are you? Try not to have. Wait, sex where in are my you room. staying? Do we know where you're staying? <laughs> yeah, where are you staying? Uh, I, I'm, I'm in. Uh, what was I in? The, I was in a hotel near Copy Square, actually. Um, I can't remember the name of it. It was a nice hotel, though. Actually, <laughs> actually okay, if it's close. Why don't yeah. you take? Why don't you take Maybelline there, and I'll wait. I think that's a good idea. You can stay up, I think, longer than both of us combined, honestly. Okay. Oh, All right, I'm s- not tired. I'm all jazzed up. You gonna be okay here, uh, bes- or Roger? Roger. <laughs> Sounds so fine. funny when you say it. Though. May I call <laughs> you, <laughs> I'll be fine. Man. I imagine just, they'll start serving complimentary coffee soon. Just text. Just text. Or call us. Yeah, let us know as soon as he gets back. I'll text you the codes. <laughs> Can you tell us what it is ahead of time so we know which what is what? <laughs> what the code means. Two of you leave and go back to Bobby's hotel. What happens there? Do you guys talk at all? I think it's maybe it's one of those things where we like start to talk, right? But then we both like fall Just asleep. Pass the hell out. Yeah, yeah. Like I get I get in the 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 um, the chair by you know the by the table and let her crash on the bed and we're th- trying to talk out what we've learned but then end up just drifting off into sleep. But I okay. think Vicky is talking about the book, at least to Bobby, and she's like, right. in the book, there's, um, it's demons. It's like demonology stuff. So it's mm-hmm. like, right. like the carvings on the floor, like, right. with like, um, summoning, like if they bring a demon in, mm-hmm. then it's, mm-hmm. and Dallin's a demon and, mm-hmm. Dr. Dallin's the demon and if his demon and, and she just like kind of uh, and you both pass out about 3.30 in the morning <laughs> Neil opens the door to the Ritz Carlton <laughs> right. smelling like tell me what he looks like Skid and what he and what he smells like uh, he's covered in muck and sewer juice <laughs> That's what they call it. That's sweet, sweet, sweet. He is juice. flanked on either side by four anthropomorphic turtles. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's a mess. He's a mess. Uh, his gla- like one of the lenses is knocked out of his glasses. Um, and uh, he comes in sort of calmly, just sort of sits on the couch next next to you all, leaving this giant me. stain. And uh, goes through his bag, and he like finds some, uh, like a like a Z pack, opens it up, starts popping antibiotics. <laughs> and remember, the rats led you out. They did. <laughs> uh, Roger doesn't make a big deal about it. He sits, he sits down, and he says, uh, 
You, uh, you all right? Oh, yes. I mean, it's not anywhere I'd vacation. (laughs) But the rats let me out. It was fine. They're very smart, you know. You, uh, took to the sewers? I did. The rats let you out? They did. Good. Well, I'm glad you're safe. Uh, Do you need some help getting to your room? No. I think I... He looks sort of like that, looks down at himself, like, I think I need a shower. And some rest. Good night. And he gets up and just starts walking towards the the elevators. Okay. Yeah, Roger will stand up and just kind of trail after him a tiny bit. And then watch him go into the elevators. Okay. Uh, And then, Roger, do you go home and sleep? Yeah, so I can walk to my Airbnb from here. Um, But uh, first he turns to the receptionist. (laughs) Says, uh... Good night, sir. What, uh... Hmm? What's your name, by the way? Marcy? Is that with an I, an I-E? I-E, yes, yes it is. Well, Marcy... I'm going to write a bad review about this hotel. (laughs) And I'm going to say that you were rude to my friend. (laughs) And of all three options, that is the worst way to spell that name. (laughs) Then he walks out. (laughs) (laughs) Patty just knows no ends. And And on that... Yeah, I mean, just the amazing pettiness. It's just <laughs> having to leave every person like, feeling insulted. Nice. She was super nice. <laughs> you let you sleep. He doesn't a, like you being slighted. You yeah. came into a five-star hotel and just <laughs> broke into the lobby at two in the morning. We're like, we're staying. <laughs> <laughs> sleep on this couch. Bring me some liquor. Bring me, put, put whiskey in that water bottle. <laughs> Gotcha. Bring it to me. <laughs> fade to ba- fade to black. <laughs> and we fade up <laughs> on a suburban street. Quiet, beautiful, utopian suburban street. Tree lined, little rancher homes, white picket fences. A beautiful sunny day. And a woman is, uh, there are two women walking. One is a senior citizen with a walker. She's kind of like having trouble walking down the sidewalk. And the other is right beside her holding a thing of groceries and uh, ushering this older woman along. When we look uh, closer, we recognize the younger woman uh, Vicky, this is your um, sponsor. Sarah? Sarah. We see Sarah with her mother walking along this tree-lined street and stopping at one of the picket fences and opening a little latch, leading her mother up the sidewalk, up some steps, actually up a ramp that they've had installed and into the front door of this house. She says, are you okay if I head upstairs, mom? I said, sure, go ahead, honey, thank you. And she's like, I'm just gonna put the milk in the fridge. And she goes in the refrigerator, puts the milk in. She goes up steps and into a bedroom. She closes the door. And you see, she opens the bedside table and she draws out a small knife. She closes the drawer, leans down, and pushes on her bed. And this bed pushes to the side, and you see a demonic seal underneath the bed. Very similar to something you saw in the book. She pulls the shades and lights some candles. She says, Thee I invoke, the bornless one. 
thee that didst create the earth and the heavens. And then her voice seems to like drop an octave. Thee that didst create the night and the day. And you see her knife starts to go to her arm and she starts to cut her arm. Thee, thou art Osorophis, whom man has seen at any time. And this blood starts to pour from her arm onto this seal and <gasps> and Vicky snaps awake. Oh my God. <laughs> in bed. Light is coming in through Bobby's hotel room window. You see Bobby. Is She's asleep. with Bobby? What's that? She's with Bobby? Oh, yeah. I went oh, yeah. to his hotel because it was closer. Yeah. So I'm oh, in the bed. Uh, you, were okay. in the, you were in the sewers. Right you see Bobby. <laughs> you were in the sewers. <laughs> yeah. You see Bobby is still asleep uh, in a chair. You see next to you in the bed the hastily put together pages of the Ars Goetia. And in your right hand is a paper, but it's not one of the pages. It's a slightly different uh, texture parchment, and it seems to be ripped from something else. But it's in your hand, and it was sitting on top of the Ars Goetia. Uh, go ahead over to your evidence board, and I'm going to drop it at the bottom. Okay. Uh-oh. See uh, this yeah. in your hand. Oh, boy. Oh, yes. no. What is this? It says, Thee I invoke, the bornless one. <laughs> thee that didst create the earth and heaven. It's literally the f fucking note. And then below it, it says, Carve symbol, premu primutation, do not leave the circle, ritual calling, announce the 72 names, inscript chosen seal, inscribe Wait. chosen seal. Wait. Oh, and there's God. blood on it. <laughs> Roll a sanity check. <laughs> oh. Was I having the dream of knowing that? Like, am, does Vicky know about the Sarah stuff, or was that the audience knowing about the Sarah stuff? That was the dream you were having. I was having that dream. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Vicky just woke up from, and I was dreaming that Sarah was doing this uh, ritual summoning in her home in uh, in Nebraska. I believe she is eleven. Under 64. Oh, crushed it. Critical, Critical success. success. <laughs> That's crazy. So how does that manifest? Stay strong. I think... I think in the moment, instead of freaking out, like immediately, Vicky thinks back to when she was unconsciously or subconsciously carving the yellow sign. Um, and she thinks that she has written this. And that she was having like a nightmare due to the stress of yesterday and not having enough sleep. Um, so she's she's making it like normal, even though she knows it's not normal. <laughs> Whether she wrote it or not, it's not normal. But after like overcoming that initial shock, then she does start to like logically think about it. And Sarah was a suspect for her. Sarah was fucking weird, and she was involved with Jim, mm. uh, the guy who did the library that stuff that Vicky volunteered for and Jim has come probably up with the voice men. that he heard that Roger heard on the other yes. side of the door that sounded familiar it, it, it is oh, he worked yeah. in the library so and if she was Vicky, your sponsor and we were married I probably met her yeah, yeah. She, she knew where your son is before she moved away so now Vicky logically thinking about this taking note of Orsiforia or Saron or Saronifaris. That is a hard one. You did a good job, Joe. <laughs> or Saronifaris. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> she takes note of that Duh. and like wants to look it up in the look it up in the demonology book. Um, and she just starts like trying to remember things about Sarah to bring up to the group to to be like this could be a connection and we and we need to follow this lead. Okay. <sighs> Everybody, uh, tell me how you get together the next day and what your plan is. Denny's! <laughs> yeah, we're gonna need some <laughs> breakfast. <sighs> gonna need a grand slam to get over all this. All right, we we'll cut experience. to Denny's. Four of you four of you are at a table at Denny's. Is that okay, Skid? Sure. No, where'd you want to go, Skid? I have allergies. <laughs> Seriously, Denny's. No, what are your Denny's. allergies? De Hank, are you <laughs> allergic to pancakes? <laughs> yeah, to, to Grand to Slam this? breakfast? Yeah. Yeah. All right, we Moves go to Pavement. We go to Pavement, the nice coffee shop. I think that's up more Neil's speed. Yeah. 
We go to okay. pavement on um, Newberry hey, Street. I'm, you go to I'm pavement. Wealthy, I'm old. I only have so many days left. To yeah, live. we go to Back Bay and we go to Newberry Street. <laughs> Let's and we sit go outside pavement. so we can smoke. Yeah, and we sit All outside right. so we can smoke. All right. Uh, you ask for an outside table, and they sit you down out there. Bobby, you are looking in through the restaurant to see when your server is coming out, and you can just see on a TV over the bar area just flashing police lights the lower third <laughs> about the fire last night local doctor police officers. found you see taped to glory hole different <laughs> shots of the <laughs> local man was found taped to a glory hole this is the fifth finding this month just outside of take the mass and this house burned down it's an open and shut case <laughs> Um, but yeah, you see, there's news coverage about the fire last night. All right. No, n- but nothing, uh, n- nothing, nothing, uh, like that would like indicate that there was something strange. It's just a fire. Like the, the news is just like a fire broke out, right? Nothing. Like, uh, it weird. says the man is missing. You know, man the, missing. the owner of That's the home weird. is missing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, okay. police investigating, uh, four suspects seen leaving the scene. Oh, that kind of stuff. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> I, God, say that. God. I was like, we're gonna have to go down to the Boston Police now. Yes, we gotta kill, kill the entire Boston yeah, Police kill Department. Like every detective in the Boston Police. You keep watching, and you see an image of Jesus on the screen, just talking, being interviewed by uh, somebody. It's, neighbor. Yep, you see the neighbors being interviewed. Oh, Would he say something about us, the neighbors? You can't hear. You sat outside. Shit. <laughs> uh, all right, so Close you guys. Captions. All right, so what are you guys talking about? Hopefully, nothing, or hopefully there was no traces left after that fire, and everything was destroyed. But we we have to be sure, right? We have it, to be sure. It can't be. Certain, but returning to the scene of the crime is a dangerous game. That's right. Yeah, this insistence on <laughs> everyone has on returning to the scene. <laughs> yeah, we cannot go back. It's a little, we can't go back. A little back. disturbing. I think All right. uh, Vicky says, I think we need to contact another handler. We need to contact Delta Green and tell them what's going on. I know we weren't sure who to trust, but after all of this information has come to light, I don't think they know what's going on. I don't know if we can trust them. I know, but we can't be against them and against society and reality. We need some backing. Our hand is gone. It's gone in many ways. But we weren't even on we weren't even on a real mission. It was made up. It was all made up. Why don't we just walk away then? Because we haven't. We haven't stopped it. That's not our job. But these things, these people know our real identities. They know information about Vicky's son. They sent a letter to him. I can't walk away. Right. So this has nothing to do with Delta Green now. This is personal. So if we want to deal with this, we're dealing with it because it's personal, not because it's our job. What's the difference? Everything. You saying we're on our own? No, we've we've got each other. In fact, that's probably it's probably all we have. We're the only ones we can trust. <sighs> You're right. I can try. Oh, I can try and contact whoever it was at Delta Green that put us on the Barnabas and see if they have any other information. Well, I mean, we've at Barbus. least Barbus. 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 Barnabas, 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 Barney, Barnabas. Um, at least we did one thing right, according to them. Maybe, um, I don't know, Neil. What do you or? Sorry, more now. It's weird knowing your name. I just want to... What do you think? You're a doctor. You're a man of logic. 
Neil hasn't really been listening to any of this. He's just watching pigeons. <laughs> Neil? As this is going on. Mm. What do you think? Sorry, what? Are you okay? Yeah, fine. <laughs> so scary. Oh, God. Well, I mean, we either report to Delta Green or we do it alone? I, I just think... I have an idea. But I don't think you're going to like it. What? What is it? Well, I think we need to ask questions of people where there are no repercussions or no obvious repercussions. I think we should summon a demon. What? <laughs> I don't think you know what you're talking about right now. I, I know it sounds crazy, but we could ask. Maybe get some straight answers. Maybe even gain a powerful ally. I don't know. Maybe that's crazy. That's... Hey. Sorry. That's crazy. I'd be able to... I'd be able to help me get home. What? Make sense of all this. I think we need to, um... I think we all need to regroup a little bit. I think everybody is, um, very on the edge. Oh. I forgot to tell you. Um, I had a dream last night about my sponsor, and I woke up with a paper in my hand that I don't know if I wrote or not. I don't even know how it got in my hand. But it's, um... She was summoning a demon. And I have the incantation, the, 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 the thing. It's written out. This could be a lead. I, I mean, we could go talk to her. Maybe she's part of this. It, it looked just like Abigail's. It looked just like Bobbis's. It, it's a seal. It's a carving on, on a floor. Where is your sponsor now? Nebraska. She moved to help her mother, which she was doing in the dream. It, it's, it was very vivid. It was very realistic. I felt like I was there. I, I don't know. I Listen... This is... We should try to stay rooted in reality. For all we know, this was just a dream. We've all had vivid dreams. I say we go with Roger's idea of summoning a demon. <laughs> <laughs> you I knew, too? You too? I knew he'd be down with this. Uh, Why not? If we don't like it, we'll just send him back. Absolutely. This person fellow might it's just be easy. the right person for the job. I can't believe I'm asking this. Have you ever summoned a demon before? It's the first time for everything. You're never too old. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. If we don't summon a demon, we don't have to do that, but we're, we're, we're at our wit's end here. All roads lead back to the hospital. Whether this doctor is a demon or not, I don't think he is. I think Barbus is just out of his mind. We have to go back there. We have to see what's in his office. We have to see where this doorway leads. And we have to go in. We have to be ready to go in guns blazing. Right, so what are we right. doing? Are we going to the hospital or are we summoning a demon? The hospital. The hospital makes okay, more sense. No, Thank no, you. No. <laughs> we can Thank summon you, the demon anywhere. We can certainly <laughs> summon it at the hospital. Did you get any sleep, uh, Neil? Are, are, you, are you okay? No, I don't really need any sleep. I'm not tired. I've also I've been got up cigarettes. All night. <laughs> okay. I've got cigarettes. Okay. <laughs> all right. I've and also we're sure been we up don't, all night. We sure we don't want to talk to Delta Green. No, we don't need to talk to them. We are Delta Green. There's no one above us we can trust, and so we have to pursue these leads, finish the mission on our own. I think that's our only choice right now. Then it's back to the hospital. <sighs> And I go, I, yeah, I guess we, yes. 
Uh, I'm sorry, I missed it. What before the hospital? Uh, I, we're just gonna like regroup, I guess. But that's the plan: is to like go to the hospital. Go back to the hospital, since the door in. Are you Marcus's going? House is closed at night, or are you going today? I guess we should go at night. Yeah, we're gonna want to see what that where that door in the doc Doctor Dallin's office goes. And so we're going to go to the night floors. Is our we're, plan? We're going back. Going back to the night floors. So stupid, but I'm so <laughs> I'm down. And but this time we're going to summon a demon in the night floors. We'll summon a demon in the night floors. The, night floors. the <laughs> evil you know is better than the evil you don't, or whatever. Well, so uh, at least That's if we do it say. there, it will be in the night floors, not in our world. Yeah, on our turf, the night floors. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, if if it gets out of control, it's not going to run rampant. Yeah, throughout. don't worry. We'll have we'll have home field advantage <laughs> in the night floors. In the night floors. <laughs> but we'll be armed to the teeth, right, Roger? That's right. Yes. Do you know how to use a bazooka? <laughs> I can learn. <laughs> I can learn before tonight. It's actually pretty easy. Just pull yeah. the trigger. It's, right. like, it's like any other gun. It's just very heavy. All right. It's just like, <laughs> just like, like any other gun. gun. Like it shoots a missile. <laughs> the ignorant shit that you say is so amazing. <laughs> it's like a gun that shoots a very large gas propelled bullet. It's just, it's just like a regular gun. <laughs> just makes a bigger hole. That's all. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Are so, you going back to the night floors? We're going back, baby. Yes. Looking on the night floors. Talking about the night floors. We're, we're going, going back home. Summer's room. We're going back, we're going baby. Going through the back. tiny doors. God help us. <laughs> on the night floors. We need answers. Ain't it crazy how the night floors. Well, we'll see what happens next week. Let's go. Let's <laughs> play. Oh, and let's hit the night floors oh, next week. Through the night floors. Through the night Going to the night floors. Working on the night floors. Bob Seeger, you next week. <laughs> oh, baby, yeah. Yes. Mike, drop. <laughs>